On today's episode, we will be engraving onto bamboo pens. You probably have seen these floating around and they are very common on a lot of the wholesale websites. AliExpress, Timu, they all sell these and you can get them up so cheap and they are perfect for your own personal home, your own gifts, or they're a great product to actually put a business name on there and sell them. So today I'm gonna to be showing you the full process of loading them into the Xtool F2. Then we will also be getting the design into Xtool Studio, setting it up, framing it, applying our material settings, and finally we'll be engraving it. I'll show you the results at the end and then hopefully Hopefully you have a new skill that you can put into your laser engraving arsenal. Let's crack on. These bamboo pens, as you can see, are really, really cool looking, unique items. You can pick them up really, really cheap in packs of 50, 100, 200 from most websites. They look so cool when they're engraved because the wood and the contrast of the engraving just looks brilliant. And they end up looking premium. So in terms of actually mounting these, you can lay them on their side and engrave them, but it is challenging, it's hard, and it is difficult. And as I show you with most of my videos, and you're probably gonna see a common theme here, and that is jigs are often a really, really, simple but effective way of actually getting consistent and quick results on engraving and in this case I will be using a jig and we're going to actually engrave five of these in succession just so we can go through an actual accurate use case because if you're going to make one of these the chances are you're going to have to make more because you can sell these or you can give them away as gifts as I always say and it's just one of those really cool things so we will also be focusing manually the laser on top and the way we do that is using this knob here we're going to turn it anti-clockwise and that will make the laser head come down and you'll see the two dots are joined up, which means this is now focused the correct height away from the top surface. So we're on the Xtool Studio homepage. We're gonna click new project in the top right. That will load up our screen and you'll hear a beep and make sure your machine is connected. It should be green, that indicates it is. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do then is we have manually focused the laser as I showed you. I also want to show you that you can automatically do it. It's not always 100% foolproof, but it is something you can do. There is the ruler icon here, and if you click on that, the machine will go dark, it will take a reading, and then it will flash back, give us a thickness, and it should also update the image to show what is on our build plate, and it does. So you can see our pens are all laid out, and they are all ready to go. So the next thing we wanna do is we want to look at putting our design onto this. And I wanna explain something to you. If you've seen the metal pen engraving video, then this might already be clear to you, but if you haven't, when engraving onto spherical objects that are, have that kind of profile, there is a set amount on top where if you hit it with the laser, it's gonna engrave nicely. But if you try and hit the laser on one of the curved parts on the side, you don't get a very good impact from the laser and ultimately it refracts off or it bounces off and it just doesn't look great. So we wanna make sure our design fits within that really narrow window on top of that cylinder and that we get a nice engraving. And I've worked out approximately five to six millimeters height of the text seems to be a nice area to go with and that's what we'll go with in this video. So for this, we are gonna click on the text icon on the left T and then click anywhere on the actual workspace and you'll be greeted with the words hello. So I'm gonna call, I'm gonna make some branded pens here. So L3D Accessories is the name of the channel. Subscribe if you haven't. <laughs> Um, so I'm just going to make some L3D accessories pens. Why not? You know, at least I can use them then and actually have a good use for them. And you'll see when you bring something in, and I will change the layer of this to red, just so you can see the contrast a little bit better. When you bring in a bit of text initially, it comes in as a score, okay? And if you engrave that now, it would look like you drew an outline of the text, but it wouldn't fill in the middle bits. So make sure you have engrave selected if you want to engrave that is. And what I will say is I'm gonna show you a nice trick at the end of this to really make your engravings pop onward. So stick around for that as well. So let's position this and you'll see at the moment the height of my text is actually five millimeters. So at this point, I'm not gonna change it to six because we're gonna change the font first and get this looking how we want it. So now that we have our font selected and we've wrote what we want, let's change it. So if you click on the arrow, by default, Lato is the default text and if you hover over different texts, it should update and show you what they look like. And to be fair, there are some really cool texts on here. You can see there's loads of them. I've already had a look, and I like the look of this bangers one, to be honest with you. I think that looks really cool, and I think it's going to engrave nicely. What I will do, though, is I want to spread that text out a little bit longer, just so that it can fill the pen out a little bit more, and also it just gives it more space between the engraving, which gives it clarity. 
So to do that, select your text, then over here you'll see two little triangles facing in. That's not what we want. <laughs> Click on the arrow here, which is the little up and down arrow, and then you'll see two areas. So what we want to do is the one on the right side has a line either side of it. That's the one we want. And then just click the up arrow next to it and you'll see it spaces it out. So you can ultimately do that as little or as much as you want. I think in this case, something like what, you know, that looks quite nice to me. So I will go with that. And I'm going to just position it roughly where I think it is. And one, one thing I will say is we will be framing in this because even though we've got a camera with these kind of shaped objects and the placement of the camera, You'll see it's not always exact. Just because it's central on the actual item there doesn't mean it's going to be when we actually engrave. So for this, just to show you some more features, I'm going to be adding a little bit of extra stuff to this design. And I'm going to be going into the Elements tab, and there is a pattern area. So I just want to add a nice little pattern either side of it. So click on See All. There are various different patterns. And I'm just doing this to show you what's possible. I like the look of this one. So let's bring it down approximately to the right side. I'm going to have one either side. Like I said, it's just a case of showing you what it can do and giving you an idea to get creative yourself. At this point, we now want to resize this to our six millimeter height, which we know is a safe engraving distance. So I'm going to click on the shape or the text and up here, you'll see the height is currently 5.37. I'm going to type in six and there you go. That has increased that to six. I'm going to do the same with these shapes here, the elements. I'm going to reduce them down to six and there you go. And then I'm going to drag a box around all three of these items and I am going to come back up here and there, there's two things you can do here. You'll see there is an icon with a square and two lines either side. If you click the arrow next to it, you can distribute it horizontally evenly basically. So watch this now. Look at that. It's automatically centered that text between those two shapes, which is great for us because we know it's even. I like being even. And then finally, we want to also select on um, this, these, this bit here. And I want to vertical align center, which you're going to see. It's now all shifted. It's all lined up, which means we've got a nice tidy pen. So let's put that in what we deem as the current center point. There we go. And the next thing I'm going to do is copy and paste that design to fill out the other pens. I'm going to copy and paste the design now, as you can see, just so that we can engrave all the pens with the same pattern because we are doing this in bulk, because let's say we want to go to a show and give these out, or we want to sell these to someone, or it could be anything. We want to make it in mass so that we've got a nice, quick, repeatable production line here, and this is the way to do it. So you can see it's not all perfect here, but it's good enough for us to now go over to the machine and individually frame each line to make sure we're happy. So to frame it, down here in the bottom bit, you'll see a hatched line and an arrow. Sometimes you can do an outline engrave, which will show you the actual text on it. In this case, though, a rectangular engrave will be more than adequate and actually be better because we can make sure it's centrally located over the pen. So click that. I'm going to drag the light power up to 10 just so I can clearly see it on the camera for you guys. And then what I'm going to do is click the frame. So what you're going to see in a second is when you frame it and you've got all of these, it's going to do one big engraving box around everything. Basically that there as I highlight it. That's not very helpful for, to us when we want to engrave on individual items. So in this case, whilst it's framing, you can now select each line by dragging a box. And what it will do now, and I'll show you it after this, it will now show individually the bits you're selecting, which is good because we can individually adjust them using the arrow keys on our keyboard up and down so they sit in the right place and then we can engrave it. So let's go and do that now. Okay, so hopefully it's clear that to show that first box, even though it looks central on the picture, it isn't actually central. So I'm going to use that arrow on the keyboard whilst it's framing. I'm going to tap up arrow and it will move it gently into that position where I want it. And I'm watching it as I do this. This is a really important process of any aspect of laser engraving. So I've selected the next row down now, which you should be able to see. And I'm going to tap the up arrow and it's going to update live as I do it. And you can see there. And that's, that's on top now. So I'm going to do that for the remaining three pens. So the bottom one nearest to the camera. There we go. Just slowly tweaking it. And like I said, I've got a wireless keyboard and I'm literally watching the machine and just tapping the up on the keyboard to make sure it goes where I need it to go. And that's the fourth one done. Now we're going to do the fifth one. 
and as expected it is a little bit off there we go so there we go so now we have all of our items engraved and if i do that overall box that should naturally sit over all of them and end in the same place so we're good let's apply our material settings next okay so we are happy with the positioning of our items which is great you can see my camera is definitely you know not showing it as accurately as i'd like but it is what it is let's move on we've framed it we know it's good we need to apply materials now so i've preset one up i've done some testing i'm happy with these so i'm going to click on it and show you what they are so i've made one called bamboo pen i'll click apply click got it and then now if you see i've got vector engraved which i've called it because these are vectors text and elements are vectors we're using the blue light 75 percent power 300 speed and 120 lines per centimeter. Okay, that's the first thing we're doing there. We're gonna try and get a bit creative here and we are gonna do a second pass after the engraving pass and the second pass is gonna be a scored line. And that scored line is basically gonna draw a line around everything, outside of everything, and try and just make it that little bit more prominent. And normally I do it in two passes on these tutorials, but today we're gonna to do it in one pass by creating a completely new layer. So select your whole setup, right click, copy, and then paste. And that will give us our design here. And what I'm gonna do is I am gonna take that design, right click on it and change the layer to something else like blue. Now over here, I'm gonna click on the score icon there. And you'll see it's now an outline of everything. And once again, I've got some settings you can use for this. Blue light, 70% power, 175 speed. And what I need to do is drag it so it is exactly over the other design, and it is there. They are very important steps, making sure it's overlapping. Now the next thing we're gonna do is click on the layer icon down here, and the order of these colors determines what order they get engraved in. So at the moment, it's gonna do the, the blue score before it does the engrave. I like it to do it the other way around. I like it to engrave and then score. So click on the red one and drag it above the blue. And that is now set up to do that. And the way we make sure that happens is down here in the process tab here, we click the arrow and then we click on the auto planning arrow. And then we go to user defining. And then once you click user defining, we select by layer. That means it's gonna engrave the layer by the top layer first and then the layers underneath it. Happy with that? Now what we're gonna do is we are going to click process and it will tell us one minute 52 to do all of these. And if we look at our engraving path, you can see it's gonna engrave all of the actual engraving. And then at the end, if you can see that, it's gonna draw a line around everything. That's perfect. So let's click start and let's see this engraving. Now, I always wanna say we're using the blue diode so make sure you close the lid and have good extraction because bamboo in particular produces a lot of smoke and soot. So we wanna draw it out and make sure everything is safe. So let's do this now. Let's take a look at these results. Hopefully it's as clear to you as it is to me. It's done a really good job, but this highlights that bamboo as a material and, and some other types of wood, they can be very inconsistent in the results they get. And you can see each one looks slightly different to the other. I hope you can see just how much potential there actually is with these pens, because you can put absolutely whatever you like on there. You can give them away, you can sell them, you can give them as gifts, but they're a really versatile and cool option to take forward. So I hope you've learned something new today. Thank you very, very much for watching and as i've said before check out our facebook community groups where we share all of our settings also subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of these videos and thank you very much for watching once again i hope you've learned something new and let's move on to the next one